this video is going to outline how to create a precedent drop-down list in Excel, as opposed to the more commonly used dependent drop-down lists in financial modeling. The following business planning spreadsheet requires users to select a product from a standard drop-down list, but then select a precedent business unit. Creating the precedent table. The precedent table will craft the precedent drop-down list whereby, based on the precedent business units, the model will stipulate which products are the province of each business unit. Once built, model users can easily add, remove or change which products are designated for each business unit. Remember, this is an example demonstration on building a precedent drop-down list and there are likely to be other alternative methods to create the same type of drop-down list in a financial model. Creating the precedent VLOOKUP lists by product. The VLOOKUP lists will indirectly form the foundations of the precedent drop-down lists. In the first product, Double A underscore one. The max count if less count blank function will rank the business units that appear in the below list of products under each business unit in ascending order. The VLOOKUP function from G13 to G16 will only reference the corresponding business unit if the product, cell G12, appears in the below list of products under each business unit. The mechanics of the number rankings in F13 to F16 becomes clear once the VLOOKUP functions by business unit are filled down the table. It is fundamental for each step in the process to build the precedent drop-down lists is 100% accurate and complete, otherwise the lists will not work. Simply copy across to itemize each of the nine products, which this video is going to fast forward over for the sake of time. Building the precedent drop-down lists by product. These lists by product will list the above tables in order of ascending order to safeguard the proper functioning of the dynamic ranges, which will be established via defined names and ensure flexible drop-down lists in data validation. 
VLOOKUP function will again be used to reference only the numbers which contain the business unit name in the above table, otherwise a space value will be applied and not a zero. It is vital that this is done correctly, otherwise the dynamic ranges in the precedent drop-down list will not function correctly. Repeat these steps for each of the other products. The video will again fast forward over the rest of these for the sake of time. Dynamic ranges for the defined names. Please understand these formulas are being composed and will be copied in the define names function in order to affect the accurate referencing of the defined name by product. It will simply ensure that each of the nine offset functions is referencing the correct range. To save time, we will fast forward over the other offset functions. Adding the drop down list by product. We can now insert the drop down list of the products, which forms the driver of the precedent drop down list by business unit. Don't forget to type the match function in cell 028 because this will drive the resulting formula for the precedent drop down list via data validation in cell L28. Creating the defined names by product. Now comes the moment to create the defined names by each product which will apply the previously created offset function formulas in row 24. Remember to apply an exact naming approach to the products relative to the subsequent naming convention in the data validation. Otherwise the precedent drop down list will not fully work. For the sake of time, this video will fast forward over the other defined names by product. Installing the precedent drop down list. Remember, the indirect function that is appropriate for a dependent drop down list will not function for a precedent drop down list, thus, the choose function is adopted instead. The choose function will be determined by the match output in cell 028 which will influence the ensuing precedent drop-down list of business units that is available to the model user. As we can see, once we change the output of the product drop-down list, it will alter the resultant precedent drop-down list of business units presented to the model user in a financial model.